morning. Here we are again, another weekend. I know, Hope best sunshine. The sun. Great. But glorious. Glorious. Isn't it? It's fab is that fabulous where you are, darling? It's fabulous, but I think because we pay so much money in council tax, it's probably even more fabulous here than anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> because you get what you pay for, to the point where at Christmas I'm going around and looking at the trees going, you can take a few bulbs out of that, I'm not paying for that, and that can come. <laughs> um, <laughs> such are the perils of living in London. Um, yeah, know, of yeah, course, yeah, and what a, difference, what a difference it makes. I went down to Hyde Park um, this week and met up with a pal, and we wandered around um, the Serpentine and it was just magical. It was just magical. Oh. See everybody sort of coming out and oh. rollerblading. I mean, that is the last thing I want to do when I come out. Of the <laughs> no. Uh, no, dear. No. Yeah, lots of rollerblading, those electric scooters. But but uh, more than anything, it was just so lovely to see people promenading again. Exactly. Safely, yeah. safely, of course. Uh, it was great. Oh, bring it back. I remember rollerblading at school, actually. Um, Roller skating, not roller. I was going to say you couldn't have yeah. rollerbladed, darling. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, isn't it that that old gag about the fact what's the most difficult thing about rollerblading? Telling your mother you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good morning, ladies. Now, I am any old job. I understand today that we're, we're talking fashion, so if you don't mind, I'm going to take the lead, which I never have knowingly done. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, darling. I can't believe your life. I know I was I was always very sort of smart and sensible and I always looked like I was dressed by my mum. In fact, before <laughs> I went to university, uh, we flicked through a catalogue to get some clothes for university because she wanted to send me off, you know, uh, looking smart. And of course, I looked completely out of joint with the rest of the students. Uh, and it was like, you know, sort of crew necks and, you know, I, it looked like a school uniform, uh, basically. But Aww. there's one item in my wardrobe, which normally at this time of year, because of award season, I would bring out uh, because the weather's on the red carpet, um, you need to keep warm. And also, girls, as you know, in the world of show business, you've got to have a gimmick. So I've brought it out. I've dusted it off. It hasn't seen the light of anything this year because obviously there are no dues. But this is my awards season chocolate brown fake fur coat with <gasps> my monkey bum oh, I've seen you in that many times, Richard. Oh, I know. And you know, the thing is, I never had the confidence to wear it when I bought it. I think it was about, it's Oswald Botang, and it was about 150 quid in a fire sale. I'm not sure what shop burnt down to actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it normally would be quite considerable, but I never had the sort of the guts, the chutzpah, if you like, to wear it until I started to frequent the red carpets a little bit more as a roving reporter. And I thought, well, I'll bring this out. And the stars, um, it's like a magnet to them because it's always, as I say, slightly out of keeping with the rest of the, the, the fun on the fur. Um, uh, uh, oh, I love that. On, on the um, red carpet. Judge Rinder, well, you know, Rob. Um, yeah. And he said, whenever I see you on the red carpet, Richard, I know that a charity shop has benefited somewhere. <laughs> And it's absolutely perished, ladies. There's, there's holes in it oh, everywhere. No. But I can't bring myself to sort of give it up. Yeah. Oh, don't give it oh, up. Oh, I okay. love that. And when you give it up, you can give it to Clemmy. Yes, well, oh, I could. No. Yes, she could have it in her basket. <laughs> honestly, when, you, when you're down at the O2, um, which, which is a, the National TV Awards, you know. Oh, as you freezing. do. Yeah, free. Absolutely Baltic coming in off the Thames, isn't it? Oh, uh, Paris. Yeah. And also, and when, when you're covering red carpets, even if you're invited to the do, you've got to get there a good hour before anybody else. And it's absolutely oh, free. Yeah. So not so much a fashion faux pas, but one that I absolutely cherish. The only other oh, it's gorgeous. faux pas I can think of, uh, ladies, if I can continue to lead the way, uh, was I was at journalism school and I got invited to this do in Chelsea and it was quite posh. I always felt slightly out of my depth with, um, with some of the people who were on my course. And I got invited to this party and I was one of the first people to arrive. And it was, I, if you know London, it's down on Cheney Walk. It's a very, very posh part of, of, of London town. And so I sort of went into this mansion flat and I was wearing this um, brushed cotton uh, brown, chocolate brown is my black, by the way, uh, chocolate brown um, shirt from Next. And it was quite a billowy little thing because I always thought it was much more flattering. You could then tuck it in, belt it in, and it was a more flattering silhouette. I thought about it all. Anyway, in the middle of the party, um, this woman comes up to me. She said, um, excuse me, but your shirt's on fire. And I was standing, standing. I didn't know anyone at all, absolutely mortified. And she was so casual about it. 
I'd basically been standing by a candle and this billowing oh. a blousy effort, um, no. it caught light at the back. To give you an idea, there was so much extra fabric in it that even though it was set alight at this party, um, it could be gathered in. So you put oh, the darts in the back, and ever the thrifty one, I didn't have to give up the shirt. Fashion and oh. me don't always go hand in hand, very rarely. <laughs> oh, one night I was with Carol McGiffin, and we were at the NTAs, and um, I wore a pair of black trousers and a black uh, oil one that fastened underneath, and it had got like little bits of glitter on and things, and a black coat. Didn't think anything about it didn't wear a bra because it was an all-in-one didn't think anything so carol and i went up the red carpet we did all the interviews we probably did one with you got to the end where all and the cameras were all flashing and blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> somebody said somebody said don't look in the mirror sherry and never look at these photos <laughs> went, what she said you can see right through your top you are completely naked on these photos. All that's covered, I had little bits there, the rest, you are completely naked. And every time the cameras flashed, so did my nipples. Oh, darling, I am going straight to Google to find this picture. <laughs> you must, I've tried to find it and I can't find it now. It's the most embarrassing thing. Well, the next day on Loose Women, they ripped me apart, I mean, it was, my nipples were all over. I've never shown them so much in my life. I mean, they were everywhere. Hysterical. So Hysterical. just check in the mirror before you go out, girls. But, I mean, it's a very valid point because, you know, not, not many people really, really enjoy the, the red carpet. I would hazard anyway. It's quite nerve wracking, you know, no. it onto the carpet, particularly somewhere like the National Television Awards and everybody's there. Freezing. Uh, so it was like a bit of a family um, day out, really. It's not a bad do. Yeah. But it, it's only really in the cold light of day that you realise indeed what you look like. Unless, of course, you've got an absolutely crack team of stylists and it's no wonder that people exactly. are nasty about it, getting the right stylist and getting the light yeah. off. Yeah, it's like my mum, we're always invited. We were always, because my mum's best friend is Barbara Broccoli, the, you know, who, who does all the Bond films. So she, we were invited to all of the premieres. And I remember going with her recently before she passed away. And um, about 10 years ago to a Bond premiere, we were walking down the red carpet and she suddenly looked down and she'd lost her heel of her shoe. Oh no. And we don't know where it was. So she was hobbling down the red carpet <sighs> at the Bond premiere with all the cameras flashing. And we, I couldn't, we never found it. So she had, you know, a little heel on one and nothing on the other. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have to say, the, I, to me, the big fashion faux pas of the century is nylon baby doll pajamas. You know those little, with the little ruffles? Because I, I did a, years ago, did a series with Peter Skellen of the BBC. Oh. And I, I had to wear these blinking uh, PJs. And that, I think, I found yesterday, and I feel that that's what I was doing to Peter Skellen to say. <laughs> You're giving him the finger there, dear? Yeah, what I thought about these PJs. Because oh. they were that horrible night, you know that feels horrible. Yeah, the nylon. You know what I mean? Oh, horrible. But anyway, that's my big. <laughs> Can I just say, dear, what I loved is that you said just the other day, ten years ago. Yeah, possibly <laughs> one of my favourite phrases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just saying. <laughs> Ten years ago. It feels like it. A few years, like ago, years ago. A few years ago. Now, actually, probably only two or three years ago. I was going to a big event at, in. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm sure all of you've been to it. The Children with Leukemia Ball, which was Paul O'Gorman, and one of those. It was a very big ball, and I was sitting in the taxi on on the way there. And literally, my, I had a gorgeous, gorgeous little golden evening dress. I mean, it was absolutely fabulous. Tiny little, you know, those little straps, just tiny little straps. And, you know, everything, of course, because I do have very big breasts. And literally, one of these straps just popped and it went boom. And I thought, wow, I didn't have anything else with me. Or anything else, not, nothing to put over me, nothing to do. And I was by myself going into, so I just thought, Oh no, how on earth do I get out of the car, into the ladies? What do I do? So I had to literally, 
I don't know, I grabbed somebody when I got out of the car, I literally grabbed somebody and said, can you help me? And somebody had to go and get some, um, some needle and cotton and they had to come into the ladies' changing room and they had to sew me into this dress. <laughs> but I, all, I, all I kept thinking was, oh my goodness. And there was loads of pictures <laughs> afterwards that were, that were taken. We can oh. see where, where one, one side is like this, right up here, and the oh. other side is right up there. Oh. Do you know, when you talk about that, it, it, it reminds me of when um, Kate, lovely Kate Garraway and I were um, hosting the Inside Soap Magazine Awards um, many years ago. And uh, we were invited to Debenhams to, um, what was it they uh, Everyone's to... gonna know what you're talking about, don't yeah. they? <laughs> I know, uh, remember Debenhams? <laughs> Uh, and uh, we were invited to pick out um, a dress and a, and, and a suit, you know, a nice whistling flute. And anyway, uh, Kate and I were obviously in the changing room together, you know, just like Will and Grace, you know, gals and guys. And uh, we got her in the frock, but we couldn't get her out of it. Um, and it, it was completely wedged over, if you'll forgive um, the delicate phrase, her window box. And we've told this story on air before, so I'm not sharing too much that she would not yeah. there herself. But um, the poor um, uh, lady who was working in, in, in Debenhams had to go and find a pair of scissors and we had to cut Kate out of the floor. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no this is gonna go <laughs> so well. Just couldn't, get back over. couldn't get it back over for all the money in the world. And you know when you get a bit of a bead on and you just get so hot and flushed because the more yes. you try and think about it, the more you try and rectify it. You know, you're now breaking out into a sweat in the thing as well. And it's just, you know, we're gonna have to buy it. We're gonna have to buy it. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, those are the days. What about you, H? Well, I mean, I don't really think I've had the la la's fly out or things, you know, in, in public. But I, I think I often feel, you know, you feel you're looking great and you and you go out and you do the red carpet, you do a first night or whatever. And then you see the photos afterwards and see the back fat or oh. you see the upper arm rollage or you yeah. see. And that's the devastation when you're, you know, you oh. think you're feeling glammy and then you see the reality. And I've had many of those. I but think, it's too late. No, it, it, and the, you know, um, no one's ever tuned in for my looks anyway, but I do understand the jeopardy, um, particularly uh, when the whole sort of mid-market magazine started, you know, and the whole sort of, rather than sort of revering celebrity, if you like, or appreciating its glamour, it was all about circling the armpits, like you say, the yes. back, the underfloor, um, the sweat stains and need I go on because you know frankly it's like looking in a mirror and so that <laughs> hey you know, you'd, you'd wake up in the morning and you'd, you'd either have a tick by your name or a cross by your name yeah. and if you were easily offended and I don't think what any of us really are because we've been around for so long our skin's far too thick but uh, <laughs> if you were easily offended it would be quite sort of demoralizing especially when you say um you know like you said you, you think you're feeling frocked up the gals out on the town both gals <laughs> In many places, and you're going out, and you're thinking, "This is great. I've never looked better." And then, like you say, in the cold light of day, you wake up and you think, "Oh no, what was that?" But Did worse. You see recently, up on Instagram, Jane Fonda posted posted two pictures of herself, and it was just fantastic. She posted the pictures of herself the night before, looking absolutely spectacular, and then she posted a picture of herself the next morning, and she put, "This is so." She's dressed in the same dress next morning, but with no makeup on, looking terrible. She said. This is because I couldn't get out of my dress. I had nobody <laughs> with me and I had to sleep in it. And if you look on her Instagram account, you'll see how she looked the night before and how she looked the next morning. And she Brilliant. said, it's the only time of my life, this is on her Instagram post, that I wanted a husband. <laughs> because I thought at least he could have got me out of my dress. Oh, how funny. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, how oh, brilliant. Oh, that's that's brilliant. That's Amen to that, ladies. Well, I think we frock up weekly on a Saturday um, in all our yeah, family as well. We we'll Absolutely. ask people at home for answers on a postcard if they beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. Don't look at us if you don't like it. Don't look at us if you don't like it. We say. <laughs> Even putting this on now, sort of, you know. It, it's you feel glammy, darling. It takes you back. I mean, it's faux fur, obviously, but it just it sort of takes you back. It takes me back to the days when the heat of the lights were on, you know, you were pressing. Oh, oh I love that. Those days. Shelby, yes. it won't be long, though. Not long, darling. Bye. Not long. Yeah. coming back. We'll all be around your local, darling. Yeah. yeah. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> my cyber return is open to you as always, ladies. I look forward to that because right now I'm driving the bed thing goes donger and mama needs a drink. So I'm off for my usual Saturday morning refreshment. And there's a knock on the door, uh, Richard. Yeah. My other half missed his cue again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love, ladies. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. 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 B